Okay, so yeah, just go ahead and give me your name. Okay, my name is Claudia Urrea. I'm the director of uh, learning for OLPC Association, um, based in Cambridge, and I've been working for OLPC for four years. Cool, and how has learning changed over those four years? Uh, I think that um, question uh, can be answered in different ways. I think that I always call uh, OLPC uh, programs big and national and small and community-based um, in ecology, and I think that learning means something different for all of them. They're uh, from projects that are really narrow in their goals and have achieved a lot of um, success um, like they're for example focused on having kids learn um, a few skills around reading and math and they've been successful because they have uh, put all their energy and effort on those and they're the national programs uh, that are learning different things probably not getting um, the results in terms of uh, learning as quickly but they've uh, immense uh, capacity and learning in all different aspects okay what are some of the uh, challenges in trying to basically figure out if kids are learning or not? <laughs> I mean, I think that the, I'll say that the, the first thing is to really understand what you mean by learning. And I think that's um, what we're trying to support, that is not just um, learning defined by OLPC, but is learning that every country and every community and every city has to decide and define for their kids. Um, so right now we're working in a two really interesting programs in Colombia. Uh, one is with an agency that is focused on poverty. So we're trying to understand how one laptop per child within the family structure could um, be powerful. And, and this is a measure in terms of kids becoming agents of change and uh, gains that the family has to uh, achieve in a period of time so they're better off in terms of um, the opportunities to leave extreme poverty. So that's a really interesting program uh, with different components, but it's still the same software. Uh, we're trying to develop a specific software uh, around the issues of those communities that we think that the kids could play an important role, for example, nutrition or family dynamics. Um, so those are, are there. There's another program where um, uh, a city is really defining what they want and um, you might think that it's only a, an educational program and what we're finding is if other issues within the city are not addressed, the program almost, I mean, it could have those goals of education but it, it would be more powerful if the educational program is an answer to issues of the community in terms of security, in terms of opportunity for the kids, family dynamics. So, I mean, I'm finding more that the goals of education should be addressed in a broader sense uh, and we're supporting people in doing those. What are, what are your thoughts on um, education between one sort of teacher-centric education and two sort of education like we were seeing earlier with like uh, literally tablets falling out of the sky? I mean, I think that that's, um, um, tablets falling out of the sky is more uh, uh, an attractive term to call it for attention, but um, I mean, I think that overall OLPC or the organization is trying to promote that the most important thing or remind people that the most important thing is learning by the children. Um, and it doesn't exclude teacher or tools um, like this, you know, the computer and software, but we're really starting from how children learn, uh, learning. Um, about how children learn with technology, especially when these are at scale. So it's not a few kids, a few hours per day working with technology, but it's kids working with technology at all times. So really looking at that and saying how does the other elements in the learning environment have to respond to that learning by the children. Uh, so it's what we call, I mean, what you could refer to as ch children-centric. Um, but, like I said, it doesn't exclude the teacher, it doesn't exclude the family or any community members. Um, uh, and, and that's, I mean, like I said, it's only a reminder because we still, um, we put all our efforts into teachers, but we measure the kids' learning. So we're saying, we're starting with the kid and then we're aligning the rest of the components. Um, and education, uh, because there's less teachers, 
because of course it's recognized teachers are important having teachers buy into the programs has a major impact negative or positive um, so we're trying to change that model to say all the effort should be put into the teachers and how teachers teach it you know has an effect in children and that's not always the case so it's just a, a different way to address the problem but it, like I said, it includes all the elements, only that it starts by definition with how children learn. Okay, cool. And then if you could give two specific examples in your experience, one where you saw technology in the classroom not working, being taught wrong, and one where you saw technology in the classroom being where it was working and it was being... Um, I'll say that, um, I mean, I'll give you examples, but I think that where technology adds value, that's where I always try to push people. Uh, I think the first, not wrong, but the, the first you know, tendency is to do what you know how to do with the technology. So you will see in a lot of the classrooms when you go, have, I mean, have teachers having kids copy everything that they have in the board into the laptop. And I think that's really common. I would say it's not right, but if you try to say to the teachers, uh, actually writing really changed when you do it in a digital fashion. Um, you know, I used to write a report and then, you know, write by hand or type in a typewriter, give it to the teacher. He'll say, you know, you got a B or you got a C or you got an A. Got some feedback, but I never really took that feedback into improving my writing. And I think that changes when you use a digital medium. So having, you know, building on that first reaction of how teachers use technology is good. So it's something that might not be as positive, but you could just turn it into something positive. So it's really opening the possibilities and making teachers aware of how things change and how culturally things change with the presence of technology. And um, I mean, I think that's something that it answers your question. So it's something that uh, you see that could be wrong, but you could turn it into something positive. Ideally, I want teachers to uh, open the possibility to, to students um, to use the technology that they want. I mean, we have a um, laptop with a number of applications, and I think that um, children should be able to make decisions about how they want to address a project or a problem and how to, you know, a teacher might post the problem about the community and the you know, a group of students might want to write a report, take a few pictures, look at the community, the environment, and some other ones want maybe to build a campaign, interview a few members of the community, uh, and bring some awareness, and some other ones may uh, want to do a simulation. So I think that opportunity for, for children to really make decisions about their learning and how they want to address it, and preferences in terms of using software. That's ideally what I want and would like to see. Cool. And since a lot of these people watching would be future volunteers or volunteers starting out, if you could go back in time and give yourself some advice, what you know now, to when you were first starting, what kind of advice would you give yourself? Um, I mean, myself, I don't know. I mean, I think in general, I see the, you could see this um, movement in two ways. I think that um, computers, especially for the early adopters, got to all of these children and all of these countries and majors and secretaries of education, and I'm not sure people were ready to address. And I think they were believers, but not ready to really think about all of these elements and how complex these decisions were made. Um, they have improved slowly, and I think as we go, a lot of the people who are now doing programs are more aware of the situation and have more clear goals in mind. Like you will see goals like, I want to improve the education of my country or change the education in my country. And I think that's pretty big. And you see now people going, you know, I want this profile of person that will take the country to a better future. And I think once you have that, you sort of align volunteer participation, university participation, um, teachers, families, like it's easier to think about the program when you have those goals in mind and you are aware of the implications of a program like this. Cool, cool, excellent, thanks. Thank you.